How's everybody doing? Doing great. I mean, it's summer and we got basketball going on. All's well. All is well. No, I just wanted to. Uh, are we set to go, Matt? Yeah. All right. No, just wanted to start uh, opportunity today to thank everyone again for all your support of our women's basketball program here, and uh, you know, just give you a little update of our roster now that uh, as of what is today. Today'd be the 21st of June. We are official now. That it could change, and uh, we could add, we could subtract. But I do not expect to subtract, and don't expect to add. But you never know now in in today's world of uh, you know a grad tr 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 a grad tr transfer right now really be the only one that would uh, be a be able to come in and play and be eligible because the portal date is closed. Uh, so you can't get your one-time waiver unless, of course, a coach would leave, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, and then we will be going up to, to Canada to play in the, the uh, Global Jam here in July, which will be a great opportunity for our kids, uh, especially with as many new ones as we have. But just a little bit uh, – to go through our, our, our returners, we will have uh, uh, Nyla Harris back, who started s several games for us this last season as a freshman. Uh, not, not, Nyla's been in the gym. She's working extremely hard. She's improving her, her jump shot, uh, scoring facing the basket. As we all know from, la from last year, she rebounded the ball extremely well, uh, very, very strong. Uh, a, a finisher am really impressed with the work that she has been been putting in uh, we have Lex back who was redshirted uh, two year two years ago and then had plant plantar fasciitis a tear of her plant plantar fascist uh, this past year so she's back to being healthy now so we're excited about the progress that she's been making so she'll add some depth uh, in the post forest uh, very athletic very long uh, just just gives a hundred a hundred percent every time she's on the floor, um, and then our transfer from Tech who sat out at Christmas, a uh, uh, Lily Love, who is someone that I'm expecting to to be able to come in and compete. She's really done a great job of getting in great shape uh, this off season so far. She's been showing some good things all. On, on on the court, uh, a big guard that that can score with her back to, back to the basket as well. Uh, she's working on improving her 15 to 18 foot shot, but she she will give it some some strength and depth at the three four spot as well. And then you know our our two that played significant amounts for us this past year, um, you know <clears throat> Olivia Cochran, O. I, I thought finished the year extremely well. You know, had an unbelievable game against Iowa. Played ex played very very well against their against their their their, their post player. And really expecting to see O take that next step. Uh, she's been in this gym. She's working on on her game. She's got really soft touch, really good hands, and it would not surprise me to. to have her average close to a double double next next season. Uh, just really, she she's leading, she's grown. Just really impressed with her. And then um, our last returner is Mar 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 Marissa Russell. And Riss is, you know, I thought from January of last year on, she made huge, huge improvements for it. She, she, she was a big part of the run we made there, the last month and a half of the the uh, season. She's actually with Team uh, uh, Canada right now um, at the America Cup, and just been really impressed with the fight and the effort that she's been showing day in and day out. She, she is someone I'm expecting to have a huge year for us. Um, as I said, she she was one the last two months of the season that I could put put in the game and count on, and knew exactly what I was going to get. Uh, and I think she's only gotten better in this off season. So those are returners. Um, you know, so you've got two, four, five. 
of them. And now we've got uh, some some tra- some transfers in. We've got six in. Uh, five will be able to play th- 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 this year. Sosa, our last uh, signee, our our, our six five for, from from Proctor Academy. Uh, she she will be a red shirt for sure. Uh, as she's just squaring away some things academically. Uh, that she has to take care of with the transfer from the Proctor Academy and then Ni- Ni- her schooling in, in Nigeria. But really excited about her. She's also rehabbing r- right now uh, a little bit of a MCL sprain. It, it, it may have been, but she is doing well. And then we've got five that, you know, I'm really excited about it. I thought we, we did an outstanding job. My staff did a great job of getting into the portal and filling needs. And that's what it's all about. I mean, we're always going to continue to recruit freshmen, uh, you know, trying to make sure we have a, a, a good balance. But this year is a, 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 just the first year, I think, ever that we have not had a true freshman come in out of an early signing class. So we had to go to work and figure out exactly what needs do we did, did we have to have. Our first one was trying to find a point guard, and just thrilled with Jada Curry, uh, Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. She was all Pac-12. She averaged fi- uh, 15 points a game. Uh, you know, at five six, she averaged close to four four boards a game, three and a half assists and can shoot the, the, the basketball as well as pass it. So she is someone that, you know, is, is kind of the players that we've had in the past, that, uh, point guards that can score, which is what I like, where you've got to guard them. And she's tough. She has been working extremely hard in practice. Uh, just really, really impressed with, 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 with the kids. So... You add her there at the point guard mix, um, and I feel really good good about that. And then we knew we had to find a big guard that could score the the, the basketball. And Kiki, Kiki Jefferson, who was the the Sun Belt Player of the Year, um, most out, outstanding pl- a player in their their, their 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 tournament, she averaged 18 points, eight boards a game, uh, very efficient at 43 percent from the field. So just really excited about uh, her as well with the ability to score. Because, you know, when you get down into the, into the NCAA tournament and deep into the ACC, you've got to be able to score basketball. And, uh, you know, really excited what she, what she can do. And then we knew we had to find somebody that, that could get to the rim uh, and score and put so, so, so some pressure full court. Um, as as well as defend, and that is is Nina. Um, you know, she is a grad tra- tra- transfer from Florida that averaged 12 points at Florida, about five boards. Uh, very very good on ball defender. So thrilled with what she is going to bring to our 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 team as well. She's a slasher. She can get to the rim. Uh, she can shoot the three. Is it what she really loves to do? Not really. But you're going to have to at least respect her game. I, I'd compare her a little bit to uh, Jasmine Jones when Jazz play, uh, played here. Uh, so really excited about her. And then we also knew we, we have to go out and find a three-point shooter. We've got to find s- someone that can fill it up from three. Obviously, Jada shoots a three extremely well, but then we went out. We we're fortunate enough to, to, to get another grad transfer in Sydney Taylor. Uh, Sid was seventh in the nation and made threes th- this past year. Can fill it up, does not need long to get the shot off. Averaged 16 points. Another person that averaged, you know, five, five boards a game. But she also passed the ball well at, at, at about two and a half assists a game. So, Really excited with our guards, and we've got good size there. You know, you got Sid at five nine, Kiki at six one, and uh, Nina at five nine. So we've we've got some nice size at the two at the two three spots, and and Nina can fill in and play some point if needed. 
So we, we've got one that, that, that can step in and, and help fill, fill that void. And then we knew with Liz graduating and, and Josie, we are going to have to find somebody that could come in and help us play at the post. And that would be a, 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 a Henny. Uh, she right now is with her her national team over in the uh, the uh, Netherlands uh, uh, playing. She'll be back here on the 23rd, and we'll go up to uh, to, to Canada and play with us. But just really has been impressive watching her play. Uh, she reminds me a little bit of Kylie Shook with the way that she can step out and shoot the three, uh, passes the ball well, very good hands. Uh, can play back to the basket, but it's not really what she loves to do, but can face up from six to eight foot, can put it on the ground, pretty athletic. So really excited for what she's going to bring too. It's a group of 10 that I'm thrilled with. It, it has been a great off season so far, preseason, spring and summer. Uh, our chemistry is as good as it's been in a long time. Just really been impressed with how well they're all, they're all bonding and getting to know each other. The 10 days of practice that we will get, uh, which we haven't start, started yet, uh, but we will here ne next week before we go up to, uh, to, to Canada, will be really important. Uh, it's really going to give us a chance to, to get them playing together. You can play pickup as much as you want. Uh, but until you get them in, into some structure and they get to play against each other, then you get to start implementing uh, what we're going to try to do offensively and defensively. It, it's going to be a huge advantage uh, for us to get us going a little bit early. You know, I told you l last year it was going to take us a while uh, before we hit, we, we hit our stride, and uh, I think I was pretty accurate in that. Uh, <laughs> You know, everybody doubted me and, qu and, and questioned for a while, but I, I, I think I was right on that. Uh, you know, it's going to take us some time this, see, this, this year too, but it's going to be a huge help and a big advantage of being able to get out and play these games and have full practices beforehand. We're going to, with 10, you know, which is a good number to have. You want 10, 12, 13, uh, uh, 13 at the most. It's hard to keep everybody happy. If you get a roster of 15, somebody's not happy because they're not playing as much as they think uh, as they think they should. You get to a roster of 10, everybody's going to get the chance to play. Now, you knock on wood, everybody stays healthy. And that's something that we are working on with our conditioning in the weight, the weight room, and also with, with, with practice. I mean, I've got to be smart enough to know you, you can't kill them. You can't go out here and run them in the ground. And I can't expect them to be in January shape in June, in July. So I've got to make sure I, I've, I've got a plan in place, and I will, to get us to be in the best shape we can be in as we get into our, con our conference play. But at the same time, we've got to make sure we're in darn good, in a good shape in November, December, because it's not like you've got 13 or 14 to throw out there. But as a player, you want to play. So it's the great thing about this. Players want to play, and they're all going to have the opportunity to compete and play because I think we've got a really good squad here, and I'm looking forward to seeing what, what we can do. So anybody got any questions? I know I just talked a lot, and I apologize. <laughs> I think we answered more questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeff, you know, you're not a stranger to using the transfer portal. Obviously, you've had success with transfers. But when you have this many, how does that change maybe just the way you approach things and knowing that they have to adjust a little more with, you know, so many new players coming in? Well, again, I, I think the big thing is the fact that we get this opportunity here to practice and play in July. It, it's going to make things a lot e easier than if we didn't have those opportunities. Because we're going to get actually four games to where we're in a situation where players are going to get a chance to feel, okay, this is what she does, this is what she does, I'm good at this, and really start to make it, I think, an easier transition for, e for everyone. It's going to help, uh, help me too. 
you know, like I say, you can practice, we can scrimmage, we can get our scout guys out there, and that's all great. But when the lights come on and the officials are throwing, throwing on the floor, you really then get a chance to see what, what players can do. But I, I, obviously, we've watched a ton of game film on every one of these players once they went the portal. I mean, it's, it's simple anymore. It's not like the old days where you're calling and try, trying to get a VHS tape and press rewind, fast forward, and all that. Now it's just it, – it's it, – it's simple to get on the computer, on, on Synergy, pull it up, and you're seeing all these kids. So I feel really good. And not only are they talented basketball players, but I will say they're unbelievable kids. And I, I shouldn't say kids, adults, young adults. Uh, the maturity that we have is, is the best that we have had in a long, long time. And part of it is because, because of their age. We have an older team. But I, I'm looking, everyone's out for the same. Everyone's out for us to succeed, to win. And it just speaks volumes uh, for, for all of them. So I really like where we are as a team because it's going to take some time. Jeff, you, you said the chemistry is as good as it's been in a long time. Um, that suggests it wasn't great, I guess, the last couple of years. Well, and it, it's not that it, it, it wasn't great. I mean, it's just watching them all here, and especially when you have as many new ones that you have, it's kind of like, okay, how are we all going to mesh? And I'm just really impressed with how coachable they all are. They want to be coached. They, they want to be challenged. So, yeah, it's, it's as good as it's been in a long time. And it makes my life a lot e easier as well. So it's not, it's not like it's been bad here because, I mean, we've had un unbelievable success. But this is just going to be, I, I'm hoping, a smoother year. It's obviously a little different with the transfer portal, as you mentioned, not having true freshmen in the early class. Um, you also mentioned how they're a little bit more mature coming around. Does it make it easier when you've got a group of strangers, so to speak, coming together, you know, and, and seeing things like leadership and stuff start to develop quicker than if they were coming out of high school? Well, I think what makes it easier is the fact that you've got – and we are fortunate. We, uh, we do have two that will have – Two, uh, 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 two years w with us and, and, and Henny and Jada, which I'm excited about. You know, it's the first time we've had two of them that get more than one. But the difference is you've got kids that have played for four years at a place, and it's a COVID year. It's a free year. And they're not worried about all the stuff a freshman wor uh, 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 worries about. What kind of shoes am I going to get? Where am I staying? Where's the next party? Where's the, uh, you know, they're here to, p to play basketball. What we all did as freshmen, you know, it's like you're away from home, Katie bar the door, let's go. You know, they're here, they're, they're in this gym, they're working out, they're taking care of business, and then they're going back to the dorm, they're having a nice time, but it's not what you do as a freshman or a sophomore. So the maturity level is so much better. So you get on the court and you watch them work together and they can actually have a conversation with each other of like, okay, yeah, hey, this is what I'm good at. I'm working on this. And you watch him start to gel. And just over the past month, it's been impressive to watch how much better they've gotten as individuals and how hard they're, they're, they're working together. Um, obviously, with, with Haley's uh, departure, that, that changed a lot of your roster. Uh, what was your approach in terms of recruiting after that? And if you could just really talk about just that whole process when she uh, announced that she was transferring. Well, we didn't really change with how we re recruited. I mean, we had Jada Curry here on campus, you know, and I think she had even committed before Haley decided to, to transfer. Uh, and we were talking with Kiki and Sid came into the portal after that. So it really didn't change how we did anything. Um, you know, we, uh, we wish Haley the best and uh, she, she, she graduated from here and did a great job. Um, you know, as she said, she, she gave it everything she had for three years. And, and I think she, her and her family would, would agree that we gave them everything that, 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 that we had. You know, we made sure that, that, that we took care of her and whatever her needs were, we, 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 we tried to make sure we met, uh, ju 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 just like we do with all of our players. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we wish her the best. I mean, there's really nothing more that 
that we could have done, and you know, and she she had a great career here. We we haven't talked to you since that happened. Did she come in and and talk to you when she left and and tell you why she was leaving, or did you have a chance to maybe talk her into staying, or how did that all go down? No, I mean I I was actually we had scheduled. I tried try tried, tried to schedule some up. Uh, some end of the year meetings with players before I left with my family for a few days. Uh, Cause I always try and after the year, get out of town with my girls and, and my wife. And she, she had a photo shoot in, in, in New York, I think. So she wasn't able to make that. So then uh, we actually just did a zoom call and her dad was on the call and she was on the call and they, it, it wasn't a 10, uh, no, there, there was no arguing or anything like that. I've always been one that, you know, if you think there's something's better someplace else and you want to make that move, that's fine. You know, I, I wasn't trying, trying to convince her to stay or anything like that. I just, you know, is there anything we, we, we can do to help anything? Um, and she, she, she just said she wanted to, to make a change and, you know, was looking to, to, to do something di 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 different for herself and be happy and, you know, all that stuff. So I wished her the best and her parents and, and hope and hope she does great. Pastor Jeff, I guess to kind of follow up, what Chris Curry do? I mean, they were even outspoken on social media saying, you know, we're good over here along those lines. Have you sensed that motivation from this group, this especially these returners that I guess you said they do have something to prove? Well, I don't think we have anything to prove. I mean, I'm, I mean, we've only been to five straight <laughs> elite eights and <laughs> two final fours, and that's. I mean, we've been. I mean, players have come and gone here. They've graduated, they moved on, and and we've kind of survived. I mean, you know, you go back to 09 when Angel gra gra graduated. Oh, my God, what are, what are you going to do? Well, I think we've done okay. Sh Sh Shoney came along. I mean, uh, in that crew, Antonita, Tia, I mean, what an unbelievable group that was. Uh, we did okay. You know, and we're going to continue to, to be okay. Uh we, we've had great players that have come, come through this program and done great things for, for the program, and I appreciate all of them. I appreciate what the, the, the effort that Haley gave us. But like I said, I, I know we gave everything back, too. It's, it's not, it wasn't shorthanded. It wasn't we didn't do our side. We didn't, you know, we have an unbelievable medical staff, a mental health staff. We have two mental health staff me members that are assigned to our team. They meet on the regular with our team. They're available 24 seven. We know the importance of mental health in today's society. You know, 10 years ago, I don't even know how many programs had a mental health staff. You know, but ever since this came out in, so, in, in social media, everybody need, needs a, a mental health coach. I mean, if you listen, I mean, it's unbelievable. I tell pe people all the time, I, get off their phone. It'll kill you. I mean, you know, I laugh because I get, uh, you know, my, my friends will send me stuff, and they're sitting there, and she's like, man, th this guy hates you on social media. <laughs> this guy says that you, you're terrible, you haven't done anything, your team chokes, and I tell them all the time, well, why don't they just set up a GoFundMe account to buy me out? You know, go from, uh, I'll contribute the first $10, <laughs> you know? It's like if you listen to the stuff, you, it's going to drive you crazy. And I, I tell all of our players now, hey, after, after we win, sure, look at it. They're going to tell you how great they are. <laughs> and then the next game, I, I go back to my wife and I, we laugh about it all the time. Two years ago, we play at, at Notre Dame on their, on their senior night. And it was 48 to five or whatever that score was starting that game. It was our last regular season game. And I mean, everybody thought we were the next coming. Like, holy crap, they're great. That Friday, we go to the ACC tournament and lose to, to Miami. The same people that said how great our kids were, were saying how much they sucked. And it was less than a week. Uh, it's amazing how you can go from being great to terrible. But that's just the way society is. And I'm like, guys, don't look at it. 
because you're going to think you're worthless. And unfortunately, and it's not unfortunate, it's what it is. Sports is what it is. Sports is a, you get instant gratification or frustration. It's everybody can do your job better as a player. Everybody, we're the one profession in coaching that I'm telling you, everybody can do better. Everybody can. And I keep telling people, apply for a damn job. Tell them your experience. I sat on the couch with a beer in my hand for 22 years. And I know what I'm doing. And it's, it's just what it is. So I'm like, guys, stay off of it. But unfortunately, they can't. I mean, they, they just can't at this age. It's, it's how they live. So I know what we provide here. And, you know, we provide the support for all of our student athletes. We're very fortunate that our athletic department, our administration, believes that it's more than just winning basketball games. It's just more than hiring a good strength coach. You know, it's the mental side of the game too. You've got to make sure they are mentally in a good place. And I do know that we supply and provide that support to all of our student athletes. You, you mentioned uh, Angel, uh, Shoney. I guess with the makeup of this roster, as opposed to your, your other teams, do you feel like it's going to be more by committee as opposed to say one focal point player or two um, focal point players that you know, will be the strength. Well, I think we've got a few of them that can actually score the basketball. Uh, Jada Curry has shown it at a high level in the Pac-12 uh, that that she can put points on the board and score. Kiki Jefferson is is a big time player as well. And then Olivia, I mean, I think we could have, which, which I believe we did in 22 with uh, Emily and Kiana, we had a lot of players that could be a leading scorer each night. I think that could be the, 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 the case for this team. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we have four or five kids average in, in double figures, you know, which I think would be great because then it makes you a lot harder to guard. But do we have a, some players on this list that can go off for 20 at any given night? Yes. Jeff, you've been coaching a, a long time, and obviously the game has changed a lot in recruiting. Can you remember a challenge like this roster construction and having to recruit so many new players and now the other side of it having to gel so many new pieces together. Oh no, I mean it's it's part of it. I mean it's just it's it's the new norm, which is okay. I mean I don't mind it, which I, I we actually had a really good time, enjoyed recruiting these kids. Uh you know, I, I'd say of all the portal kids we recruited, if there's five of them that we got here, I mean we 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 probably went five for six or five for seven. It's not like we uh we missed out on many. So I, I was really pleased with when we focused in on a kid that we were able to, to, to convince them and show them why this was such a, a, a great place to come. And then when they are as good of kids as they are, it makes the gelling and, com and, and, and coming together much easier. Uh, and we're going to do a better job here in the next few months and the next month of trying to get some more things out on, on social about each kid. Uh, so our fans can get to know them. Because I think that, that's the next big thing we have to do a better job of here is when you do have as many new players, you can't wait till school starts before you let our fans start to get to know them. Because then I think you're, lo you're losing out. I say it all the time, the days, and it's really sad in ways, but the days of going out in the garage, in, in, in the driveway, not the in, in in the driveway and being Jeff Hall or Kyle Macy, you know, when you're outside shooting are done. Because you got to know those guys over three or four years when you're sitting here watching them on TV. It's, you know, on the men's side, it's one and done. You see a kid may, maybe for two or three years in our game because of the portal. It's like each year. It's like if I bought a jersey from my favorite team, I wouldn't put a name on the back. Because you never know who's going to be that that person again the following year. So it's just the way this recruiting is going to go. And I, I don't I think the portal's gonna slow down some because this 
upcoming year is the last year for COVID kids. So that, you know, you play four years and then you can still go someplace else and play is one year left. Just kind of piggybacking off of that, I guess how does this landscape in college women's basketball kind of look right now because of, you know, so many transfers? Is there more of an emphasis on those portal players as opposed to high school players? Or how do you kind of approach that? No, we are first going out after high, uh, high school players for sure. There, there's no qu question about it. I think the biggest challenge that's coming out now is because of the one-time transfer. I, I think if I looked at a player and I was like, okay, I, I think by your sophomore year, the middle of your sophomore year, you could be getting 18 minutes a game. I think we work with you and develop you. I think you're going to get there. Well, I think players now are like, if I'm not going to play as a freshman, I'd rather go someplace else, play for two years or a year, be conference player of the year, be on the all-freshman team, and then transfer. And that's kind of, I think, what's happening, which is not – it's tough for other schools as well when you go out and you find somebody in some back gym that nobody's going to, and all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, this kid can play. I hope nobody sees her. Well, they won't. You sign her, and you, and you get her for a year. Because once she blows up on your team, then it's like, well, I can go here now. So I think that's what's taking place. So we're – we're always going to recruit high high school kids. Um, I, I I think it's important, but at the same time, I think that's why you see other players going different places. Is like, hey, I'm, I really don't want to spend that year developing. I'd rather go play and develop than play behind s someone else. Do you have obviously to nils become a big thing? Where are you guys at in terms of your nil? In terms of being able to stay competitive uh, at the level you want to be? Well, I mean, we, we're working on it. We, we have a good group out there that our, our, our 502 circle is really working hard uh, to, to try to help us, you know, be as, as competitive as you can. I mean, it's a, it's a different ballgame. I mean, you know, nowadays kids just flat out ask and parents, you know, what's my opportunity? You know, and that's – Do they expect a number? Do they want to hear a number? Yeah. And, and it's everything, everything, and I've, I've had these talks with our compliance, the NCA guy that was out recruiting, you know, out there evaluating with us, walking around talking to us about NIL. It's it, – everything's how you word things. Okay, it's all how it's worded. So a parent comes in, kid comes in, says, you know, how, how, how much can I get? I can't say I can get you $50,000. But what I am allowed to say is, well, here's what our players currently earn. Someone of your caliber, I think you could earn somewhere between this and this. You know, and I'm, I'm decent at math. So if I told you, Rick, I think you could earn between 100 and 200,000. Well, I would add both of those and divide by two and go, maybe I could earn 150. And I think that's what's what's being done. And do they come back and say, well, this other school said I can get this? It's starting to get to that. Yep. With, with the elite players or with all players? Elite, well, elite players. Now, there, uh, there are a lot that think they can get something, and then you have to break them the bad news. <laughs> all right. You know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, NIL, the concept is great. I, I think it's absolutely great, you know, for kids to be able to earn money off name, image, and likeness. At the end of the day, there's a handful that can truly do that. The rest of it is what, what, the, what can the collective get each kid? It, it's what it comes down to. What are the boosters, what are your local businesses willing to do to put money into a collective to basically I, – I, it is what it is, buy players. I, I, it's okay. I mean, I, I just wish everyone would just say it how it is. It's – and I'll probably get in trouble, but that's okay. I mean, I'm just – I don't think I'm saying anything wrong. But it's, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not here to fight it. I'm trying to figure out how to – play within the rules and 
It's part of it. But it's, 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 it's interesting. Do you have to change your way of thinking when you bring a player in? As a, as before, you, you knew you were going to have him for four years, but now do you have to plan on maybe they're going to leave after one or two years? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, because, see, the one thing about us is, like, we're not going to come in here because I, I refuse to tell some kid, I think you can earn between a million and two million. Well, no, you can't. Now, unless you're doing it yourself, like unless you've got some outrageous social media following and whatever it might be. But like our collective, that that's not possible. So I'm not going to sit there and tell kids that, hey, here's what we can show you. Here's what our current roster is able to do. So that should give you an idea of what you would be able to do. So I'm never worrying about, as it's starting to ha happen from what I've, I've been told, where P people are being told they're going to get a certain amount and then don't. That's not going to happen here with, 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 with us, which is the dangerous game because you don't – I could tell you I'm going to give your kid $400,000 and then she comes and plays and she, she, she doesn't get anything and you can't do anything to me except your kid can leave. Yep. Or she can make it hard for you to recruit in the future by saying – Well, sure, that's exactly right. Yes. Um, is there a concern on your part or approaches that now, I guess, that some teams like the rich obviously get get richer for that, and you know maybe a super team is created as a result? No, I'm not. I mean, if it happens, it happens. It it, it, it happens in pro sports all the time, right? So that's we're we're just a lower degree of pro sports. You know, I just laugh because we still have all these NCAA recruiting rules to follow. You know, of when you can call a kid, when you can't, when they come on campus. But, but at the same time, I can pay a kid. I mean, it's really what it is. It's like, so I got to follow these rules, but we can pay kids. You know, the collective can, okay? And I, I just chuckle at it. I'm like, why do we have rules? But no, I mean, it, it is what it is. If someone's willing, if you've got people in your town who – want to say, I want to win a championship in table tennis, so I'm going to buy the best ping pong player that we can, well, then that's great. And, you know, it, but that's like, it doesn't guarantee you're going to win every year. I mean, like the Yankees nor, nor, normally spend a pretty good amount of money on their baseball team, where the Reds, can't say we do all the time, but <laughs> we're playing good ball right now. Uh, we're playing good ball right now, but when's the trade the, the trade deadline? Okay, well I'm waiting to see our whole roster gone <laughs> for uh, uh, for some graders. Have anything exciting on the schedule? Exciting on the schedule. We are uh, at UConn th th this year. That that that's been announced. In stores or in Hartford? I, I, I'm sure to be in Knoxville. Well, we played in stores the last time we were up there, except for the Mohegan Sun tournament, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where, where that's going to be. Uh, UK's here at home. Uh, DePaul's coming back here. We're going down to, to Houston for a tournament over, over Thanksgiving, waiting to get the other teams there. There will be one or two BCS teams in that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's um, we're, we start at, at Cincinnati this year since they came here last year. What else we got? Who else we got on that schedule? Washington here at home. Yeah, so we've we we've got some some pretty good games that we'll find out, you know, how quick we're uh, we're going to gel, and then they should announce I think our ACC SEC matchup here shortly, and I know we're we're, we're on the road for that for sure. See, this is another NCAA tournament team. Well, I would sure hope so. Yeah. No, I mean, I'd be disappointed if we're not. Then you might be fi finding a GoFundMe page. Yeah, we'll be on, we'll be on Twitter. Golly, <laughs> hell yes. <laughs> if, if, if we're not, I'll start the GoFundMe page. <laughs> Holy cow. No, I'm really excited, excited about this group. I mean, we, you got Olivia, Riss, 
not Nyla Harris, all three right there played huge minutes for us this past year. Jada is play, you know, she is a big time point guard, Pac-12 freshman of the year, all Pac-12. So she's played at that Kiki, Kiki's player of the year. Nina played at Florida. So we've got kids that, that know how to play and have played against good teams. UMass had a great year this past year. And, and Sid was was fantastic. So I'm looking forward to him. I, I, I think it's going to be a, a fun year. Are we going to go undefeated? No. I'll throw that out there now. We didn't go undefeated last year. We lost 12 games, and everybody thought the world was coming to an end. <coughs> Nope. Kind of, uh, this nope. We'll coach the same way. I mean, we're 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 gonna get them going and try to show them, you know, what what we have to do, how hard we have to play, all of it. We're not gonna change how we do things. I've said that. I mean, our kids work hard. I mean, why would we want to stop working hard? That makes no sense to me. It, so we're gonna keep doing things. Sure. I'm again. The one thing we haven't done here is won a national championship. And, yes, I understand that. And, you know, there's a lot of schools that are trying to do that, and we've not. But when I go back at it, I'm not going to hang my head and say, man, we suck. You know, it's it's been shitty here, boy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, granted, it's been 16, it's been 17 years now, and that that's our goal is to do that. But, you know, we're, we're proud of where we've taken this program in, in, in 17 years. And we're going to continue to scrap and continue to fight and, and see if we can't do it. That's our goal. You mentioned O pretty early, and I know it's early now with summer workouts, but how have you seen her maybe start to embrace that leadership role that she kind of naturally has from being such a tenured member of this team yeah no she she's 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 done a great job in workouts she's out there encouraging her teammates she's out there every day working herself um you know we're gonna need more scoring from her but i think she'll touch the ball more she'll have more opportunities to score we'll be looking to really focus on inside out more you know i i, I think that iowa game showed exactly what what she can do you know, we've got. To, I've got to do a better job of, may, of may, making sure I get her the basketball in op, in areas to score, and then she is a willing passer. So if she gets a a double team, she will pass it. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what Olivia does th this season. If you mentioned COVID, obviously, kind of playing a part in a lot of the transfers. Do you see after I guess that'd be twenty <coughs> five or four, whenever? run out of players that are eligible for that. Do you feel like the, that transfer will kind of slow down a little bit? I think it's – well, it's going to slow down just because all those kids that could transfer now can't. So there's going to be a drastic – you go back, you've got Emily and Chelsea who were part of that, that Final Four team. Then it was Josie, Morgan, and Cece on, la on last year's team. Sid, Kiki, and Nina. So eight of our ten would have, would, wouldn't have been able to transfer. So when you think, that's 80% of ours would not have been eligible because their eligibility is up. So I think they're, it's definitely going to cut down. Uh, will you still have transfers? Yes. There, there's no question about it. Because it's as soon as one thing might not be the way you like it, now you don't have to worry about trying to fight through things and try to see. You, you can just say, hey, I'm jumping over here. And that's okay too. Like I, again, I, I'm 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 okay with it. We we've done extremely well in the portal. It's it, it's been good to us. So I'm not I'm not one to complain or anything. Thank you, everybody. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Now we get on Twitter. Get on Twitter. Yeah.